longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. And 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And this is where Paul is saying, edifying and building up the body of Christ. Here we have it again in verses, um, verses 20, 29. Do not let the unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Ephesians 4 verses 29. And Ephesians 4 verses 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all the bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along every form of malice. And what I like about this is Ephesians 4 verses 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Isn't that interesting? So the simple fact is, if we are in the body of Christ... We follow the word of God. Then we should be building each other up as brothers and sisters in Christ. We shouldn't be overreacting and pushing buttons and saying, well, hey, I don't like what someone has said. And it's possibly just an error. That's all it is. So I'm going to ring a person and I'm going to have this really deep conversation. I'm going to start to bring out my human I'm going to start to act like a Gentile and and be human about it. I'm going to start to talk to that person in a way that is Gentile, not of the Son being like Christ. And see, as a living as the children of light in verses Ephesians 4 verses 7. So I tell you this and insist on it. In the Lord that you must no longer live as Gentiles and do a futility, futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separate their life from God. It's important that we never separate our lives from God. It's important to realise that it is about the maturity and saying, okay, I have an option here. I don't like what someone is saying. I can pray for them. I can pray. I can read my Bible. I can gently and loving, indirectly, is another word for gentle and loving, is indirectly uh, talk about those matters that is pressing on your heart. Um, The difference is we have a heart and we have a mind. And what happens is, you know, God knows what's in our heart. The question is, God knows what's in our heart, but sometimes our mind takes over and we let our mind control us. And the mind can do more damage because that's, that's where the, you can let the devil into our mind. And if you let him into your mind, then he's going to get into your heart. And the question is, is that what we've got to learn to do as, in a, as living as children of light in Ephesians 4, 17. So, so I tell you this and insist on it. And this is what Paul's saying. In the Lord that you must no longer live as Gentiles, do it in fu- futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding. So I think that I just want to leave it there. But before I close, Ephesians 5 says, Be imitators of God and therefore as dearly loved children, live a life of love. This is Ephesians 5. Live a life of love just as Christ loved us. And he gave himself up for us as a fragment offering of sacrifice to God. So the simple fact is, be imitators of God. Be imitators. One way of imitating God is to have a forgiving spirit. The way we intimidate our Lord is to act just as he did. The sacrificial way to Jesus is expressed his love for us is not only the means of salvation, but is also the example of the way we are to live for the sake of others. To live for the sake of others. This is coming out in the word of God. It's about others. It's about the salvation. It's about bringing people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is about thinking about how can we not be like those ships in the wind. But having a solid foundation in Christ. 
you know, Christ is the foundation that we're on a solid rock. And as frustrating as it is, we have to learn to be like brothers and sisters in Christ and come to one another in love and 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 think about what what is really my brother in Christ trying to do? Do I jump to conclusions? Do I judge him just like that? Or do I think about it? Do I seek the Lord in prayer? Do I ask the Lord, what, what is my brother trying to tell me? Or what is my sister in the Lord trying to tell me? Not assuming, not jumping the gun, not pushing buttons. Because Jesus doesn't tell us to jump the gun. Jesus does not tell us to assume. Jesus does not tell us to jump the gun, get on the blower, get on the phone and start to get crazy with that other person. The question is, Jesus says, do things in love. If your brother or sister has made an error, not heresy, has made an error, love him. Love the person and stop trying to change that person because it is the love of Christ that is going to change the person. And if you think you can change a person by, by forcing your, your perceptions or, or your understanding on them, it's not going to get you anywhere. But as the word of God, it is what Christ commands us to do is to love our neighbours. It is the word of God. It is not us being like Gentiles. It's not like as, as in, in Ephesians 4 verses 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. And verses 15, for whom his whole... Ephesians 4, I've just misread this. But yeah, as, as I was saying, in Ephesians 4 verses 17, so I tell you this and insist on it. In the Lord you must no longer live as Gentiles. You must no longer live as Gentiles. You must no longer live of the people of this world. You must not act like the people of this world. And in Ephesians 5 uh, verses 1 says, But be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and to live a life of love just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up to us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. A lot of people would disagree with me, but at the end of the day, it's not about disagreeing because there's no right or wrong here to the point. It is what the Word of God says. And I'm basing this on the Word of God, you know, and, and I just want to leave it here with, with, with what Paul's saying is to edify, building up the body of Christ and remembering that there's not, say you have uh, 2,000 people in your church. 2,000 people in your church. Why do you leave five of them out, out on the fringe of the church? Why do you do that? I'm just talking in general. Why do some churches do that? They have 2,000 people in the church and five people are on the fringe of the church, on the outer of the church. And Jesus is, Jesus doesn't... Where does it say in the Word of God that, that, that you've got 2,000 people in your church and you've got five people on the outer of the fringe of the church? What does Paul say? Paul says it's about edifying and building up the body of Christ. You can't be edifying and building up the body of Christ if you have 2,000 people in your church and 1,000... 1,900 um, 1, are, are building up and edifying the body of Christ and you're building up 1,900 but the other 100 are neglected. Well, according to the scriptures in Ephesians 4, it says this, Ephesians 4, 16, from him the whole body joins and held together by every supporting ligament and grows and builds itself up in the love of each part does its work. So you've got 2,000 in the body of Christ. What you've done is you've cut 100 ligaments off the 1,900, because 1,900 and 100 is 2,000. And what you've done is you said, well, I'm quite happy with having those 100 on the outer edges of the church, on the fringe of the church. And, you know, um, that that's not what Jesus is talking about. That's not even what Paul's talking about. Paul's talking about bringing the body of Christ as a unity in maturity, edifying and building up. And Ephesians 4, talking about, in Ephesians 4, verses 12, to prepare God's people for the works and services so the body of Christ may be built up. 
until we reach the unity in faith in the knowledge of the Son of God who became mature in attaining the whole measures and the fullness of Christ. I want to leave it there. But I want people to start discussions and, and talking about how can we, if we have a congregation of, of, a, of uh, 200 people, and 100 people are so clicked into the church, but the other 100 people in your church, say you've got a church of 200 people, and 100 people are clicked in and they are really part of the body of Christ, but these other 100 people are coming to your church. I'm just giving you an example. You could have a bigger number than this. And a hundred people are coming to your church. And this is where Jesus, this is where Paul's talking about this and challenging this. That you've got 200 people coming to your church. A hundred are in the church. Um, they're, they're well and truly ingrained in the church, the ministry and all the rest of it. Da, da, da. And they're really involved. But then you have a hundred people over here that are on the fringe of the church. They're on the outer fringe of the church. How do we... How, as brothers and sisters in Christ, how do we bring those hundred people back into the to the center, into the body of Christ? That's a difficult question, because this is where Jesus, this is where Paul's saying that 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 we somehow have trouble. But Ephesians four says, verse sixteen, from this the whole body is joined and held together. So if you have two hundred people in your church. That's the whole body that is joined together, but somehow you, somehow the whole body is not joined together. So that means you're cutting off ligaments. And so that means you, you have a problem within the body of Christ. From him the whole body is joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in the love as each part does. How can you have a church that has 200 people in it, and there is 150 that is part of it, say, I said 100 before and 100 before, but you might have 50 that's on the outer. Should you not be bringing those 50 people into the body of Christ with the other 150? This is what Paul, this is what Jesus is talking about, that we need to be, be, be mature, mature in Christ and mature brothers and sisters to be able to show the love of Christ. Oh, um, I'm in a church and there's 200 people in the church and I'm, I'm part of that 150. I'm not part of the 50 that is on the outer of the church, on the outer of the fringe of the church. And I'm part of that 150 and I'm going, oh, I feel a bit uncomfortable. I feel a bit strange and, and, and it's a bit weird and... I'm sort of in my complacency and my comfort zone. I really don't want to go and drag 20 of those 50 on the outer, the, the outer of the church, of the fringe of the churches, because I'm quite happy being in this clicky group. I'm quite happy being in this group. But that's not biblical. Jesus does not talk about putting that you have a church of 200 people and you have 150 that is really saying they are part of Jesus Christ they I imitate Christ well if you in imitate Christ and you are walking with Christ and you are like Christ then why is there 50 people on the outer fringe of your church so there could be five there could be six whatever but why are those people on the outer of the body of Christ that would be the question but this is something that we need to pray and we need to work out how can we have this problem in society? How can we strengthen the body of Christ? How can we not have the body of Christ? How can we bring the body of Christ that is the whole body which is joined and held together by every supporting ligament? Because these 50 people are as important as the 150 people. They are as equally as important. And these 50 people here might... Um, well, just give an example. Um, David might clean the toilet. Um, Mary might vacuum the floor. They might not be um, doing important roles. They might not be involved in important things, actually what's going on in the church. But they are contributing to the body of Christ. They are contributing to the body of Christ. But we see here that... There seems to be an issue with the unity of the body of Christ. And how can we talk about the body of Christ and not encourage 
the body of Christ as a whole body that is you you know joined and held together. You can't say that a church that you attend is 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 as a whole and joined together when part of your congregation, part of your church is on the fringes of the out of the church. That's not the body of Christ. The definition of the body of Christ in Ephesians 4 um, verses um, 16 says, From him, the, from him, from Jesus, the whole bo- Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the body. From the whole body, the joints are held together by every supporting ligament. If everybody that is part of the body of Christ is not supported and is on the outer fringe of the church or is just whatever, the question is, it is up to um, the body of Christ and people within the body of Christ to bring those people into the body of Christ. Because this is not a thing of the world and this is not about being a Gentile. Gentiles might do this. But Jesus certainly doesn't and Paul certainly doesn't. And, and the thing is, this is not of Christ um, bringing, in to, bringing people into the body of Christ, asking people to attend a church, but basically excluding them. Saying, well, we, we'd love you to attend our church and we want you to attend our church. And I'm talking in general. If the Holy Spirit convicts anyone of what I'm saying and the person gets upset with what I'm saying then they need to question and they need to seriously get on their hands and knees to God and say, well, hey, I'm really, really really upset about what um, this person is saying about the body of Christ because I don't agree with this. And if if you're saying you don't agree with this, then you don't agree with the Word of God. You're actually arguing with the Word of God. Ephesians 4.10 says this. And if and, and, and look, if we were to to look at this, um, that that the from from the whole body joined and held together, we need to pray that the whole body is continue to be joined together, to be glued together. And if we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, then we shouldn't be disagreeing with with, with one another. We shouldn't be. Um, saying I'm higher than you and I think you're committing heresy. I think that's the wrong thing. I think the point is people do commit errors. After all, remember where we come from. We are all sinners in, and that's where we come from. We're all sinners and we're saved by God's grace. And it is God's grace that saves us. Because we step out in faith and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. So I just want to leave it there. And I, I really want to pray that that, that we can um, build up and edify. So just before I finish, I will pray and I will be asking the Holy Spirit to intercede. To intercede on, on, on the point that there needs to be this edifying and building up of the body of Christ. So I'll just pray and then I'm going to end this. Lord Jesus, I just ask... As Paul was saying, as the word of God says, that we need to build up the church, the body of Christ. We need to be edifying the body of Christ. And Lord, that we want the body of Christ to be the whole body joined and held together. And Lord, that we ask the Holy Spirit, that anybody that listens to this message and is is convicted or annoyed, well, if you're annoyed, you probably are convicted because you're getting annoyed Because this is not about Gentiles' behaviour. This is about God's work. About what Jesus is saying under that new covenant. That all of us can come to the foot of the cross. Any of us. That we we can receive that free gift. But Lord Jesus, I, I, I pray for Aubrey and Madonga. And I pray for the churches and the leaders of these churches. That there is no division. There is no dividing, but there is a building up of people. And there is a building up and preparing God's people. To, preparing God's people for works and services. It's not about people coming into the church. 
It's about having that discernment and understanding that people make errors. People will make errors, as we see with Paul and Peter. You know, Paul was telling off Peter, but he wasn't saying that he was committing heresy or anything like that, that he had made an error. And as both brothers in Christ, both apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were able to, to work that out eventually. But the question is, Lord, I just ask that all churches in Albury, Wodonga, I send out the message that, you know, let the Holy Spirit go throughout Albury and Wodonga. Let, let the Holy Spirit convict each one of us that we need to be more of building up and edifying the body of Christ, giving God all the glory and honour, Lord. Lord, Father, just to realise that it is about the fact of the whole body joined and held together and supporting every single lig lig ligament within the body, that, Lord, that, that we can see that people are welcomed into the body of Christ and when they are welcomed in the body of Christ, that, and, and this is not your word, but your word is that everybody that is, is brought into the body of Christ, that there's a maturity and there's a bringing of building up and edifying the body of Christ and, and getting people to understand that we don't want people to be on the fringe of the church or the outer of the church. We want people to be part of that body of Christ. We don't want to be chopping off ligaments and, 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 and sort of dividing and, and carving up the body of Christ. Can people carve up the body of Christ, Lord? They can. But my prayer is that the body, body of Christ can be the whole body joined and held together as one church, one unity in the Lord Jesus Christ as we're all part of the body of Christ as brothers and sisters. In the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we can learn to love each other. Learn to have that understanding. The patience. The ability to, to, to be able to realise that we all can make errors. We all can be blindsided. But at the end of the day, Lord, that we do make errors. As we know that we were sinners before we had accepted Christ as our Lord and Saviour. And I pray for every single church in Aubrey and Madonga and every single person that you will allow the Holy Spirit to go out and convict those that seem to think that it's okay to carve up the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not a chick, a chook that is cooked in an oven, a chicken that's cooked in the oven where you can start carving it up. The body of Christ is not that. The body of Christ is a whole the whole body of Christ. The whole body of Christ that is joined and held together. I just thank you for this message, Lord. And I thank you for bringing this message. That the Holy Spirit and that we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And we should share with the maturity and the understanding of building up the body of Christ. Building up our brothers and sisters in Christ Strengthening them to be able to, 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 to reach that point, to be prepared in God's people for the works and the services so the body of Christ may be built up. This is really a, a burden on my heart that the body of Christ needs to be built up, not unbuilt. As Jesus is really emphasising that the body of Christ needs to be built up. That we need to start looking at the fringes of our churches and that if people are on the fringes or or someone that is standing after church having is is fellowship and coffee lord it's not fellowship when someone is standing on their own and people are in their clicky groups lord and just ignoring that one person standing on their own if we're building up the body of christ then why will no one, Lord, just go up and say, hey, strike up a conversation with the person? There's nothing in the Word of God that says that we can make excuses as being brothers and sisters in Christ. We can't make excuses to God. We can't ex make excuses to Jesus. We can't argue with the Holy Spirit. 
We are commanded to build up the body of Christ, to edify the body of Christ, not the opposite, which is being a Gentile. Because remember, we are no longer Gentiles. That we are, we are that body. That as Jesus says, So I tell you this, and I insist that in the Lord, that you must no longer live as Gentiles. This is what Jesus is saying. We're no longer Gentiles. We're not to act and behave that way. But how come this behaviour is in the church law? Lord, I just want to leave it there that we need to build up the body of Christ. We need to start to open our minds, stop being blindsided, stop this confusion and this carving up of the body. We need to realise the body as the whole body, the whole body of Christ. And when we realise this, that it is held together, the whole body of Christ is joined and held together as a whole body. We just ask these things in your name. Amen. We just thank you, Lord. Amen.